your life work. These racks and shelves contain a lot of books, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions. How do you feel about them? Do they mean something to you? Are they your friends? Have you a real love of books and learning? You do? That's good. Now, do you like people? And do people like you? Do you like all kinds of people? The young as well as the old. People in all stations of life. You do? That's wonderful. Because when you have these two important qualifications, love for books and love for people, you may well consider the vocation of a librarian, a vocation that gives full enjoyment to the librarian and radiates it to the public. The public, that may consist of children with an awakening interest in literature or professional men searching for special scientific information or the blind who do their reading by touch or people of rural areas whose library is brought to them on wheels. Yes, there are many aspects to this worthwhile occupation, all of vital importance in the nation's life. Let us consider some of the various types of libraries and start with the greatest of all, the Library of Congress, which is located in Washington, D.C. One of the largest in the world, this library, established in 1800, is relatively new when compared with those of some European countries. Serious scholars may use its excellent facilities and wonderful collection of more than five million books and manuscripts. This truly national library extends research and other services to members of Congress, the government departments, and to the public. The many different libraries in our country have various functions depending on their location. Each one has to answer a specific need. Therefore, a modest rural library must be different from a city library offering a multitude of services to meet the needs of a great variety of persons. The specialized library in an industrial plant is different from the one owned by a law firm. But although libraries differ, basically the task of the individual librarian remains the same, bringing books and people together. The largest number of librarians are found in five general classifications. First, we may mention the catalogers who usually work behind the scenes. They organize and interpret library collections for you readers. Here is an illustration of what proper cataloging can accomplish. I'm looking for a book on television, but uh, I forgot. Do you know the author? No, I don't, and I don't know the title either. But it's a blue book, and it kind of gives the whole story, you know. I think we can help you. This boy's problem was not an unusual one. He did not know the author's name, nor did he remember the title of the book. But he knew the subject, television. Because the cataloger did a good job, the book was easily located, and the boy was further encouraged to use the library facilities. Proper book evaluation and careful research render a great service to the patrons. Second, there are the reference librarians who help readers in their search for special information. Through your books on China, can you help me identify the dating of some old Chinese bronzes? I'm starting on a new project on radar. Could you compile a bibliography on this subject for me? The reference librarians locate various materials through their familiarity with the contents of the library a very important money and time-saving service to the public. Third, we have the circulation librarian who organizes and supervises the distribution of books. And by the way, this job belongs to a classification which does not necessarily require college training. Fourth, we have librarians who serve the young people, much the same as adults are served, except that the children's levels of interest are emphasized. Each child is looked upon as an individual whose reading habits are in the formative period. Fifth, there are the school librarians who contribute to the educational programs of their schools.
college and university libraries employ special staffs for the work of research, cataloging, reference, and circulation, just as do the large public libraries. The large public schools generally employ special librarians to assist the pupils in finding suitable books. During free reading periods, the librarian attempts to direct the young reader's interest into approved and worthwhile channels, a challenging and rewarding job. In the smaller schools, the library is usually under the supervision and direction of a teacher librarian. Pupils working during free periods generally handle circulation. However, under such a plan, the library personnel changes from period to period with little opportunity for individuals to really understand library work. Up till now, we have discussed the jobs that must be done in every library. So far, we mentioned the catalogers, the reference librarians, the circulation, children, and school librarians. At times, they do their share in the reviewing of new books, evaluating and eventually buying them. This is done with one single purpose in mind, the improvement of their service to the people in their community and the country at large. In library work, there exist a number of positions that require special competence and preparation. Take, uh, for example, the administrator of a large library, often a highly paid executive. You'll understand that this person needs a great capacity for leadership, a high degree of vision and imagination, and a thorough understanding of all phases of procedures in his organization. Then there are the specialists in subject resources, particularly in scientific, technical, and social science fields who render bibliographic and reference service to public, university, and special libraries. Extension librarians for county and regional libraries who understand the social organization of rural communities and the objectives of rural leaders pioneer in a steadily expanding field. Librarians in adult education, including readers, advisors, community workers, and group leaders, provide special service for adults. Public relations specialists interpret the library's work to the public by personal contact or by means of newspapers, radio, films, or other methods of public relations. Specially trained librarians are always developing newer resources and educational uses of microfilm, motion picture film, and other visual materials such as posters and pamphlets. Music scores for classical and popular compositions are available to music lovers. Phonograph records are also found in many modern libraries. Hospital librarians provide special service for patients and hospital personnel. For instance, did you get me that material on the sternocleidomastoid and the zygomatic head of the quadratus levii superioris? Uh, yes, doctor. Here it is. I didn't mind the research on them, but the pronunciations really had me stumped for a bit. The professional librarian is required to have a college degree and to have attended a special library school. Although librarians in small libraries are not required to be library school graduates, they must have had some special training. Reference work required in high school courses in the sciences, both social and physical, will be especially helpful in acquainting you with the library. Study the work of your school librarian, and perhaps you can secure permission to assist. If you become a librarian, you will find that there can be great variety and interest as well as security in this career. Your abilities will be challenged, but you will be rewarded with real pleasure from your work, salaries comparable with those of similar professions and opportunities for advancement. You will derive satisfaction from a knowledge that your work is vital and essential in forming the kind of world in which you want to live. When you investigate the field carefully, you will find that there is a need for thousands of trained librarians contact the library schools and the American Library Association. They are able to give you valuable advice. If you have the personal qualifications, librarianship may well become your life work.